With my gardens filling up with fruits, herbs, and vegetables, I've been looking for a way to preserve the bounty, and so decided to make a solar food dryer in hopes of completing it before the summer solstice. The dryer design I used is based on an article I found online from the June-July 2014 Mother Earth News that was written by Dennis Scanlon. The article is titled and can found by searching for Best Ever Solar Food Dehydrator Plans. I modified the design so I could optimize the use of materials I already had on hand. These materials included two windows I removed from an aluminum screen door I had found on the side of the road, some oak casement boards I had reclaimed when my neighbor got new windows, and various scrap lumber I had been accumulating in my garage. I also had to purchase quite a few accessories to complete the dryer, along with a sheet of plywood, and ended up probably spending a couple hundred dollars for the assorted supplies. The dryer consists of a lower collector box where sunlight passes through the glass and is converted to heat, which is absorbed into 3-inch aluminum dryer ducts painted black. The heat is then transferred to the air that enters the ducts from a screened covered entrance at the bottom. The heated air then rises into the drying chamber where food is placed on screens. The heated air also de dehydrates the food and passes out the drying chamber through a screen vent at the top. The hinged vent covering can be throttled open or closed to control temperature and air flow through the dryer. Scanlon's dryer is quite big, around 7 feet long by 2 feet wide by 6 feet tall. Because of a lack of storage space, I modified his design to make the upper drying chamber and collector box two separate units that could be disassembled by removing six screws to make for easier storage. I also made the support legs foldable to also reduce storage space of the lower collector box. My final design is somewhat smaller than Scanlon's, measuring about five feet long and two and a half feet by two and a half feet wide by six feet tall. The smaller collector size may be part of the reason I've not been able to obtain the temperatures of 140 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit that Scanlon mentioned in his article. So far, with air temperatures in the upper 70s and partly sunny days, I've only been able to reach a maximum temperature inside the drying chamber of 110 degrees, and with typical temperatures on the mostly cloudy days of only about 100. Another possible reason for the temperature difference might be because I substituted aluminum dryer duct for the aluminum mesh used in Scanlon's design. The cherry tree my wife planted in our backyard has been producing loads of cherries this year, so it seemed like using them for dryer fodder was a good idea. The fresh cherries are quite sour, and they have a fairly large stone in them, which makes eating them straight off the tree a bit of a challenge. So I picked about a quart of my cherry bombs, cut them in half to remove the stones, and then placed them on the dryer screens. As a side note, one thing I noticed this year was that the pesky maggots that in previous years seemed to inhabit about every other cherry were few and far between this year. I only found two cherries with the small white maggots in them and hoped there were not others I had missed. The entire process, from picking to placing on the screens, probably took me about an hour. The loaded screens were then placed in the dryer, and the dryer was wheeled into the sun, and I waited for the sun to do its thing. To optimize the drying plot process, I would go out and rotate the dryer every couple of hours or so to track with the ever-moving sun. On the first day there were more clouds than sun, so I had to wheel the dryer back in the garage for the night. On the next morning, since I had plenty of extra screen space in the dryer, I decided to add some herbal tea components to the mix. I went out to the garden and picked some lemon balm, mint, and chocolate mint leaves, stripped them from the plant stems, and then placed the leaves on some screens as well. From there they went into the dryer with the partially dried cherries, and I set the dryer facing due south since I had to go into work for the day. With a cloudy day and inability to rotate the dryer, I was not expecting too much drying during the second day. On the third day I was also working, so again had to rely on a fixed dryer setting, but was pleased to find out at the end of the day that the herbs and cherries were indeed dried. So I placed my final product in bags, 
hoping that mold and mildew would be kept at bay, and looked forward to a future day when I could sit down to a nice cup of homegrown herbal cherry tea.